How's it going YouTube? Dalton here. And it's a great day outside, so I thought I'd just record outside. You know, mix it up a little bit. So in this video, I'm going to tell you some things that you should consider before considering to learn web development. Now, the problem I really have with this as somebody who's learned web development, I'm using web development in my job right now, but you know, I've also done mobile development in the past and I've worked at internships and back-end development. You know, a lot of people get into the trap of uh, really following the trend. So they see a lot of their favorite uh, tech influencers who are pitching the idea that they should learn web development. When I really think that this should is a really bad uh, place to come from, right? And I'll tell you some of the reasons for that in this particular video. So let's go through why it might be a bad idea to jump on web development in 2022. So one of the main things is a lot of people aren't really coming from a place where they're passionate about web development, right? So they come through it because of some of the things that they can gain from uh, studying web development. So for example, they might be in a really bad job right now. They're not getting paid enough or they're not, you know, they don't have a lot of flexibility. Maybe they have to go to an office or something like that. And, you know, they're using web development as a way to work remotely, you know, have some freedom, you know, be able to make more money than they would at their usual day job. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, the problem with this is you're coming from a place where you're actually wanting the outcome of the uh, of what you're studying, as opposed to, you know, being passionate about something along the way. Because here's the thing. Any sort of development, whether you do web development, whether you do mobile development, whether you do back-end development, they're all going to be, they're all very, very difficult to learn, right? Even if you come from a technical background, you know, it's still going to take you at least six months to get yourself competent enough to, you know, even sniff out a job opportunity. Because frankly, you know, studying a couple Hello World applications or, you know, your basic to-do list is not going to be good enough for most companies to actually get in the door and get a job. So you have to be original. You have to be, you know, different from all the rest of the people. And the only way you're going to be different from the rest of the people is if you're unique, if you're different. And the only way to be unique and different is to actually be unique and different, build different projects, build, you know, things that interest you because you're going to have a more in-depth understanding of these as opposed to somebody who just followed their average Udemy tutorial that hiring managers have seen, you know, thousands of times. Now, why is this so bad? Why shouldn't I jump on the trend of web development? Well, what you need to do is you really, instead of thinking from that perspective, you really need to think of what are you passionate about and then try to build solutions to that particular problem. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, what you need to do is you need to think in depth on, you know, some of the problems that going that go on in your life. Because if you think about it, most software companies are, you know, solving a problem for either a business, for consumers, you know, for, I don't know, other things. But at the root of it, they're solving problems. So you really need to think from a business perspective if you want to get to the point when you're competent enough to you know solve real business problems because if you can solve your own personal problems there's high likelihood that you're actually going to be able to solve real life business problems the only difference between personal personal problems and business problems are business problems are things at scale right so instead of one to ten users like probably something that you would typically see on a personal project or something like that, you probably won't get a lot of visibility from it. You're solving a business problem that is, you know, experienced by tens of thousands or millions of people out there in the world. So you need, your job is to show people that you need, you can solve those problems, right? But the problem is you can't think of these problems unless you know, you think critically on some of the problems that you're experiencing right now in your life, right? Because most people, they fall into the trap of tutorial hell where they're just following these tutorials. And since, unless you're an early adopter of these tutorials, you're probably not gonna get a job because you're not unique. 
So what you need to do instead is you need to solve problems. And the only way to really do this is to use some critical thinking and uh, really think of the problems that you're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis that can be solved using code. And then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find what's the best avenue to actually implement that problem, right? So what do I mean by this? Let's just say, let's just give you some examples because I do find that examples are the best way to illustrate this. So let's just say that, I don't know, when I, let's just say I'm a content creator like I am right now. I'm on YouTube, you know, and I find that, you know, I'm recording a lot of like skateboard footage, for example, and, you know, I find it really hard to I find it really hard to remove objects in the background and eliminate, you know, the, you know, the cut scenes of, you know, the, the frames being really, really blurry, right? So what I decide to do is I want to create a solution for that. I want to create it such that I can record a really cool skateboard video and then I can, you know, take pictures of it and then, you know, I can use it for Instagram or I can use it for, you know, Facebook or Snapchat or maybe some sort of blog and then that would be my problem. So at that point, I think to myself, hmm, what's the best thing to implement this? Should I use a web app? Well, a web app wouldn't make too much sense because then I have to, you know, get the footage from my camera. I have to upload it to the website and then I have to edit it there. It's not like really a viable solution. So I think then, hmm, well, I could use an app, a mobile app. Okay, that makes sense. So should I use Android? Should I use iPhone? Or should I use maybe a cross-platform solution like React Native? And then I think to myself, well, the iPhone 12 has really good camera and I'd probably be better off by, you know, developing something natively. And then from there, you can determine that you're gonna go and learn Swift development, for example, right? Let's take some web app examples as a second one, right? So let's just say that I'm building, uh, Let's just say I'm not happy with Mint, right? The personal finance uh, spending app. And I wanna build my own solution, right? So this is actually a better example because you know there's multiple ways you could do it. You could create an app, you know, you could create a website and maybe you could, I don't know, create some sort of backend to actually implement that, right? So what I do is I think to myself, okay, what is the one platform that I use very, very often, right? Well. When I'm tracking my expenses, I use spreadsheets. I'm usually on a computer, right? So logically, I think I'm gonna create a web app because I spend the most time on that and that's gonna solve a business problem or a business problem that I already experience on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So that's really how you wanna think of it. And you don't wanna, and in conclusion, you don't really just wanna follow the trends because what I see a lot of the time from people that leave comments on my channel, from people that are attempting to learn how to code, is they get into these hot topics or these hot programming languages only seeing the outcome and then they never get up to the point where they're competent enough to actually get a job. So they effectively just end up wasting a lot of their time when they could have spent their time learning something that maybe isn't as in demand, but they actually enjoy it a lot more, right? So what you need to do if you're watching this at this point on in the video is go ahead and think of a problem that you're experiencing in your life. For example, the personal finance app that I talked about, the skateboard app that I talked about. You know, you wanna critically think of what are some of the solutions that you can use using code to actually solve those problems, and then go ahead and build projects that solve those problems. And then you can build upon those projects and build uh, essentially more complicated and more complicated and more complicated projects until you're at the point where you're competent enough to actually get a job. Because let me tell you about my story, right? You know, I started out doing web development, but I actually never, you know, continued on with it. I ended up doing mobile development and I was much more successful in it. Now, a lot of people will tell me that, you know, mobile development's not actually in demand, but I was still able to make it work. So that's a prime example of, you know, 
the fact that it doesn't really matter what you study. It only matters that you're getting good enough to the point that you're actually competent at it. You know, one of my mentors once told me that, you know, you have to keep working at something until you're actually good enough that you don't suck anymore. So in particular, I think the, uh, I think what he said was at the beginning, you're going to suck. But as you keep doing it, you're going to suck so little that you actually become good. And that's what you need to think from the mentality of, right? Whether you're studying web development, whether you're studying mobile development, whether you're studying backend, you are going to suck. And the key is to build those projects to solve business problems so you can get up to the point where you're competent enough and that you suck so little that you're actually good at it, right? So if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like kind of these more outdoorsy videos instead of me sitting in front of my computer, let me know down in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video.